Good morning, good, good morning. morning, and a happy good morning to you. <laughs> Welcome to Royalty Talk Tuesday. My name is Portia Basham, and I am the CEO, the visionary, the founder of the Royalty Ladies. And as always, it is indeed a pleasure and honor to sit and to chat about the Word of God with you. Today, we have a guest. Yes, we do. So today is Special Guest Tuesday, and Virginia mm -hmm. is our first guest, and we are excited. So I'm going to give her a chance to introduce herself. But first, you grab your friend, you grab your pen and paper, you grab your Bible, so we could learn and feed off from the, the Word of God today. Let's just say a quick prayer. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise and we thank you for today. Meet us at the royalty table only like you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're going to pour ourselves a lovely cup of tea today. I put out all the royal, you know, stuff for, for, for Gigi today because <laughs> it is her first time with us. And she's going to introduce herself whilst I pour the tea. Go ahead, Hi. Gigi. Good morning, ladies. I'm so excited to be a part of Royalty Talk Tuesdays. Um, as Portia said, my name is Gigi. I am the CEO and founder of Gigi Inc. That is Girls Igniting Greater Inner Strength. And so we are a program, a confidence building program for girls ages 12 to 18. And I'm so excited to be a part of this today. Well, thank you so much for coming. We are going to pour ourselves a lovely cup of tea. And today we are going to talk about Lady of Confidence. And I love the topic. Gigi is going to go ahead and fill us in on the Lady of Confidence. <laughs> Well, ladies, you know, as women, a lot of th times we go through um, just a lot of things, issues dealing with our self-confidence and how society has put such high standards for us to, to be able to fit in. They put so many limitations on us, so many measurements, so many boundaries. And as we dive into the word of God, we realize that there were confident women in the Bible. Right, Portia? That's right. Very uh, women that, that just exuded confidence in all the things that we do. And so Portia's going to read a scripture. Um, I'm going to read from Romans 5, um, verse 3 to 4. When we rejoice, sorry, we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they are good for us. They help us learn to endure. And endurance develops strength of character in us. And character strengthens our confidence, exceptions of salvation. Yes. And so with that being said, I want to talk about some women in the Bible who exuded confidence. Some women in the Bible who really were ladies of confidence. Um, first person I want to talk about is Esther. Okay. Ooh. Esther is one of my favorite women in the Bible. Um, she saved Israel by facing the king. So mm -hmm. she did what... No one, not even men at the time, dared, dared to, to do. do. Mm -hmm. And so she did that and she was able to save her people. So Esther is really a lady of confidence that we should all strive and aspire to, to, to see as a role model. Yes. Our second one is Deborah. No, I'm not going to talk about it. You, you talk about it. <laughs> Today's, Deborah, today it's all about De you. Deborah was was the only female military leader in the Bible. I mean, she she led you know the army. She mm -hmm. led men, and so when we look at that as ladies of confidence, we have we are now CEOs and and we're mm -hmm. founders, and so we're finally taking our rightful place in society that's right and and deborah is an excellent role model of that <laughs> good and well, we also who do we have next question well, well, and also in deborah we looked at um barack did not want to go into battle mm -hmm. without her mm -hmm. he he had the respect enough to know that the, the hand of the lord was on, on her, her and mm -hmm. he wanted her <laughs> with the lord to back him up so yeah. that, that's a good thing yes. um next on our list we have abigail yeah and Abigail, she had a very foolish husband, a, a drunken, you know, her husband. And, you know, she stood up to King David. Mm -hmm. And and I think he, he ended up marrying her. <laughs> yeah, I think that the story, what, what I liked about the story of Abigail, um, Abigail was in the relationship not because she loved or, or she they, they fell in love. They, mm -hmm. It was an arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. And even if it was an arranged marriage, she still had respect for her, her husband. husband. Mm -hmm. Um um, when when David came to to the the husband, he said, "Look, um, I've been I've been working for you, and all I want is 
food for my for my men to eat mm -hmm. and the husband as anything else was not the brightest cutlery in the drawer um, <laughs> yes. decided to tell off David and David was like okay today's your lucky day you're gonna die mm -hmm. you know but Abigail in all her wisdom mm -hmm. got her her servants to prepare food went ahead of the servants in the menu she didn't just left the house and go. No, mm -hmm. she got all dressed up. Mm -hmm. She got dressed up for the occasion. And and that that's a good point right there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We need to sometimes understand when we're going into into battle or we are going mm -hmm. to change something, we need to change the whole way of thinking, mm -hmm. the whole way of appearance. We need to prepare for where we're going. Yes. So Abigail prepared for where she was going. Yes. She and because did. she did, she received favor, not because of her beauty, but because of the way she came across. Mm -hmm. She said, listen, I understand the man, not the brightest man. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> if you have mercy, we brought you everything. You just have mercy upon the household. And he did have mercy. But when the husband woke up out of his drunkenness mm -hmm. and realized what Abby did, mm -hmm. He passed out. <laughs> the Lord dealt with him. Well, uh, I'm just saying. But he passed out and David in turn married her. Mm -hmm. And I think he married her because she had the respect enough for the husband to stand up for the husband. Mm -hmm. And also to come and apologize for the wrong that he'd done. Yeah. So that's my take on Abigail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So who's our next lady? Do we have another one? We have another lady. We have the lady with the alabaster box. Oh, yes. I just love her. You and know? you're right, she doesn't have a name. She doesn't have a name. She does not have a name. She is just referred to in the Bible as the lady with the alabaster box. And, you know, what's so awesome about this, this woman is that how she was viewed. So she did not care. Mm -hmm. Okay, about how the men looked mm -hmm. at her. She didn't care about, you know, what she did. Well, she she came down and knelt down at the feet of yes, Jesus. Yes, she did. Yes, you know, she did. and so I just love, love this woman because you talk about confidence. Well, also, she, <laughs> she wanted to give him praise for what he mm -hmm. had done for mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. And in, in today's world... Most of the times we're at church, and I say that all the time. We're at church, and somebody is deep in prayer and worship, and somebody else is just looking at, oh, sweetheart, it doesn't take all of that. Well, mm -hmm. it doesn't take all of that for you. For you. Because mm -hmm. you have no idea what the person is giving praise for. Mm -hmm. where the Lord snatched them from. And that was the woman with the alabaster box. Mm -hmm. She knew what she was giving him praise for. Yes, she did. She washed Jesus' feet. With her tears. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and she had long, long hair. hair. And, you know, she dried it mm -hmm. with her hair. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though in Jesus, Jesus honored this woman, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, because of what she did. Because she was confident in what she was doing. Mm -hmm. She didn't care about the room. Mm -hmm. She didn't care that everybody was looking at her no, she crazy. No. You know, and so that is just... An amazing story. An I, amazing I, I, woman I like, of confidence. I like the way that um, the Lord also said, listen, they're not going to know about anybody else in the room, but they're going to know what you did. Mm -hmm. That's true. He mm -hmm. is going to make sure everybody in the world knows what she did because that was just honoring the Father. Yes, it was. Absolutely. Who is our next lady on the list? So our next lady is the woman who bled for 12 years. Ooh. <laughs> oh, dear God, yes. I cannot even imagine being a woman, what all she had to go through. Mm -hmm. In those days, she was basically shunned from society. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, there was nothing, there was no welcoming for, for her. And, you know, to go through the crowd, right? So she was not even supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And and she only touched the hem of mm -hmm. Jesus' garment. So being able to do that, she exuded confidence mm -hmm. because she had to, you know, get there. But she needed her healing, mm -hmm. you know. And she needed to touch, you know, just the hem. <laughs> just, the hem. just the hem. Um, I, and then that's another lady who doesn't have a name. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, she... You know, there are times we go through stuff and we say, Father, I'm going to try this one thing. Mm -hmm. And I pray to God, it works itself out. <laughs> and I, I could just imagine her saying, because she's tried everything. She, she tried all doctors. She tried everything she could. And she must have left the house saying, this is it. 
if this man is who he says he is, I'm putting all my faith and confidence in my healing through this man. Mm -hmm. She had so much, she had so much faith that she did not need to hold him. She did not need him no. to pray for her. She just wanted to just get mm -hmm. that. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's how much faith she had that all she had to do was to hold on to just the hem of his garment. Yes. And 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 that talks for us now. Mm -hmm. We we go through so much stuff in our day to day. Um we walk out of our homes and everybody just goes light camera action, mm -hmm. you know, nobody carries the problems most most people on their faces. Yeah. And when they get back home, you you spend your time Praying to God, asking God to heal your body or to save a loved one or to, 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 to release you from whatever bondage you were in. Mm -hmm. And all you need is just that one touch, that one touch from the hem of God's garment to make it all work itself out. Yeah. And, that, and that, that was her confidence right yes, there. Yes, that was, that was. Do we have another lady? No, we don't. <laughs> I'm going through this and this is fun. This is fun. Well, then let's wrap, let's wrap it up. What, what do you, what's your final comments on it? Well, my final comment is that as women and women of God, it's time for us to dive into the word and realize our importance. Um, we were important then, mm -hmm. we're important now, mm -hmm. and we're always going to continue to be important. Mm -hmm. um, to, we're uh, we're we're valuable in society and most of all we're valuable to god mm -hmm. god used so many women and he wants to continue to use us in various ways um because of our strengths because of because we are confident because we are compassionate because he created us in his image mm -hmm. and in his likeness and Amen. he created us to be wonderful wonderfully we're wonderfully and fearfully made Amen. and so i just want to encourage every woman that is watching this is to find find that inner beauty okay which brings me to uh, my invitation <laughs> <laughs> right i want to invite you guys to my up and coming event right. um for girls igniting greater inner strength this is going to be our very first event it is a confidence building uh empowerment women empowerment event it's for women and girls and so you know ladies grab your daughters mm -hmm. um, grab your sisters Sisters, cousins, aunts, all of that, okay? We and want when you guys. Is it? it is going to be May 27th. Mm -hmm. It is at the African American Research Library um, off of Sistrunk Boulevard. And so I really, it's from 12 to 4. Tickets are on sale now. You guys can still catch the early bird special. Only $15. That's it. <laughs> all proceeds will go to our summer glam camp for mm -hmm. girls ages. Uh, ages 12 to 18 um, I'm still accepting applications so if you have a teenage girl between the ages of 12 and 18 years old um, please um, you can find me on Facebook at all girls igniting um, contact me my phone number yes <laughs> my phone number is three eight six eight six eight seven one four nine that's a good one my phone number is <laughs> Well, we don't like to close our broadcast without encouraging those who have not given their life to Christ or who have backslid from the Lord. Um, Romans 10, 9 says that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead, you shall be saved. So how about you say the sinner's prayer with me today? God, Lord, I know that you are the only way to salvation and to heaven. I believe you are the Son of God, Jesus. I want you in my life. I'm a sinner. Forgive me in Jesus' name. Amen. And just like that, your sins are forgiven. And now you are part of the beloved. Well, we do not close without having our cup of tea. You could add sugar to yours if you would like. The sugar is right there. And um, visit us at royaltyladies.com and also you could like us uh, at Royalty Lady Society on Facebook and on Instagram and Twitter. We are Royalty Ladies and it is always a pleasure to sit and to love on you and we do friendship, tea and fellowship. It's a fabulous combination. Mmm. <laughs> 
you have a blessed week today.